Inside the Creative Mind was a project that saw free community groups visit the Welcome Collection exhibition Suzu Outsider Art from Japan. I'm Daniel Wallace, the artist that worked with the groups individually both at their community group centres and during visits to the Welcome Collection. One participant from the St Pancras Community Association was particularly interesting to work with. Her son is 50 and has learning difficulties. She looked after him all of his life. Seeing the exhibition, hearing about the systems of support given to people with learning difficulties in Japan, opened up conversations about how things had changed with the various organisations she'd worked with over the years. In our second session, she brought me in a book exploring the story of the five decades of the Camden Society, an organisation she'd had links with that worked with people with disabilities. She told me about the time in the 70s when they had received visitors from Japan who were interested in seeing how the organisation worked. When we were making clay models in response to the works of Shinichi Shiwada, and a few other artists from the Suzu exhibition. She was telling us about the various experiences and opportunities her son had had in the past through the Camden Society. Whilst this was happening, he created a sculpture of one of those moments, the occasion when he'd worked in Buckingham Palace for a number of weeks and met the Queen Mother. The drawing we made in the third week was inspired by Japanese culture. Whilst we were making it outside, one participant told us in great detail about the history of sumo wrestling, the main champion wrestlers, the diet they had and how they were perceived within Japan. She'd been a big fan of sumo when it had been shown on British television. One woman wasn't so keen in joining in with the drawing element due to the shaking hands she had from an illness, but the rest of the group convinced her and as a result they all ended up working together. One main participant took the lead in collaging all the images that we had made together, helping others see ways to connect them up. This really related to the collage work he'd brought in in the previous week to show me. In the past he'd lived in a number of countries and been through a a series of institutions where he had taken part in art therapy. The visit to the Welcome Collection had reignited his interest in making art. He dug out a lot of his old works, framed some of them especially, and brought them along to the community centre. We talked about why he made them, sometimes not out of choice, but as a part of therapy, and what they'd meant to him, it involved him being quite open with me about his past. As a result, he had started to make similar paintings in recent art sessions at the community centre, and was definitely confident in suggesting ideas to the rest of the group. I met the Barking and Dagenham Community Learning Disability Group the week before their visit to the exhibition. It gave me an insight into their interests, particularly in regards to craft and art making. It was really interesting to see how they made connections between the exhibition and their own work and elements of their lives, including their pets, their families and their jobs. Satoshi Morita's wall work was a particular draw for them as two of them crocheted regularly and everyone could recognise a technique within the work. The fact that he makes the works using discarded material from the workshops he attended led to one participant making links between the community centre where he works during the day with perhaps a similar system in some ways to the Shiga Open Creative Syllabus that was developed in Japanese residential homes for World War II orphans. We talked about that and made links. The story how Komi Becky prepares making his work by taking off his clothes, putting them on inside out and then chewing on the clay, sparked off a conversation about our own strange habits and how perhaps they're not quite as strange as we think they are. One participant started relating a number of works to his own life. Shotoa Kasubi's figures have a very Japanese feel to them, but they made him remember a particular time when he was a child and he would take painted toy soldiers, make them go to war with his buddy regard, which to them was a giant beast stomping through and over them. As a very religious person, he could see Noah's Ark in Satoshi Nishikawa's boat sculpture. It was interesting to me to find out how the group knew each other and could recognise their own drawing styles in the work we were looking at. The artist who repeatedly drew their mother reminded them of one particular participant's drawings and how she often draws scenes of her camping at an event she goes to every year. It's her favourite time of year, something she really looks forward to. In the time between the visit and our final session, they made a series of artworks with the artist that runs the group. They explored elements of the exhibition, from connections with monsters in their sculptures to being inspired by the use of patterns and colours. The art therapist who led the group felt this had been a really important opportunity for the group to mix with people outside of their own quite familiar and safe communities and make links between their own work and lives and that of other people in a completely different culture. The final group to visit the exhibition were teenagers with learning difficulties from Centre 404. 
One participant who'd been partly engaged during the session I'd run back at their centre was making loads of connections with the work he'd seen through the photos I'd brought to the first session. He was going back and forth between works and we had good conversations in which he told me what he'd liked about the works. Most of them, though, rushed through the exhibition, and particularly interested in the videos at the end and watching the artists making their work and hearing them talk about it. After sitting there for a while, they went back to explore the exhibition. There was one participant who hadn't been to the previous session who was particularly interested in the works in the final section of the exhibition. The detailed works that looked like plans by Kenichi Yamazaki were particularly interesting for him, possibly because of the level of detail, but also because it was easy for him to see a range of things within the artwork, including machines and space rockets. He hugged me as they left and said it was a shame they had to leave because he was just beginning to enjoy the exhibition.